Okay, part one to what if Deku and Apaku switch quirks? So, it's a very simple idea, but it can actually do a lot for the series. <clears throat> for one, Bakugo is quirkless. Deku will have explosion. Does that mean that Deku will actually have Bakugo's parents while Bakugo has Deku's? Inko. Uh, no. I'm gonna say they're the same parents. Because technically, it could make sense for Deku to be or to have explosions. He should have, theoretically, and most likely have gotten pyrokinesis. But we're gonna say that instead of getting pyrokinesis, he got Baku's explosions. There is a slight difference, though. For one, we gotta change up the quirk a little. Yes. Deku will only be able to shoot it from his hands, but instead of relying on his sweat, like Bakugo does, to make bigger and bigger explosions, since Deku, well, didn't have Mitsuki as a mom, he wouldn't get the nitroglycerin as a sweat. He wouldn't get that. So instead, he just have to train him a lot. I will say there is a slight factor with nitroglycerin. We could say that it enhances his like, he, we could say he sweats it, but very little of the sweat he actually has is nitroglycerin. So, it doesn't really do much. Now, with Bakugo, he's still gonna be, well, Mitsuki's and her husband's son, but he's gonna be quirkless. Now, is Deku gonna be, well, is he always gonna be angry? No. Instead, because Bakugo's quirk influenced how he was to an extent. You know, he was always told that he was going to be the number one hero. He was always told that he w could be a great hero with his flashy quirk. But, well, there are some cases where quirks can influence people's personalities. With Bakugo, his quirk was explosion. He had a very explosive personality. Explosions are loud and, well, destructive. And Bakugo was loud, angry, and destructive because he always bullied and broke stuff. Instead, Deku will be, well, he could be loud, but instead of just being, he's going to be explosive by the point where he's going to be very energetic. Well, explosions put off a lot of energy, to, depending on like what explosion. When it comes to like regular explosions like Bakugo's, it gets off a lot of thermal energy because, well, it's fire, it's heat. Heat is, is thermal energy. So yeah. Now let's begin when they were kids. Deku is always told that, well, he can be a great hero with his quirk. He's still going to be a bit shy, but once he gets over being shy, he's going to, well, be very energetic. Bakugo, on the other hand, is quirkless, and he still wants to be a hero, and Deku won't bully him, but some of the other kids will try to bully Bakugo, because he's quirkless in a world where almost everyone has quirks. Now, Deku will, when they try to bully Bakugo, he's going to stop them. He's going to be Bakugo's friend. Bakugo is going to still be angry, because... He's going to realize that he got screwed over in life. His, he would have had a very powerful quirk like Deku's. It made more sense that him and Deku could have had a similar quirk. Both explosions. Deku's was going to have to do with fire. So in this, they're always together, Deku and Bakugo. They're like brothers, basically. They don't bully each other. Deku doesn't make fun of Bakugo for being quirkless. And I think Deku would train his quirk a lot, since he doesn't have to rely on his, since he can't rely on his sweat to be, well, an enhancement for his explosions, he has to train it a lot. And this would cause Bakugo to train with Deku, since they're basically always together. But the thing Bakugo can train, the only thing he can train is his body, so that's what he would do. And in canon, Bakugo is shown to be quite muscular for no reason. There was no reason for him to be muscular, but he was. So, by the age of 15, him and Deku 
are very strong. Bakugo can take on a lot of the students in their class that have quirks. Because, well, their quirks aren't that strong. But he can, well, fight them. Him and Deku have a similar, well, figure to each other. They're both the same height. They're taller than what Baku was in canon, but shorter than Ida. They're probably both up to, like, Ida's shoulder or around his neck. So, they will both be around that height. And they're both going to be two times stronger than what they were in canon. Well, at least what Deku was after the ten months of training. Deku's going to be two times stronger, and Baku's going to be, well... I think he's already stronger, so let's say, since they've actually been training for years, years, let's say they're actually three times stronger than what they were in canon, because they've only really been doing calisthenics. For those who really don't know what calisthenics are, it's push-ups, sit-ups, uh, squats, running, stuff like that. It doesn't involve weight training, it's all different types of exor exercises that you do by yourself that you don't need any equipment with so they wouldn't have equipment they wouldn't have weights or anything to do weight training they just train their own well body now when well Bach goes says he wants to be a hero I think that a lot of the kids would laugh at Bakugo or some would try to keep it in but some of them would give off a light giggle and this would make Deku create small explosions in his hands and everyone would just shut up. Because, well, Deku and Bakugo are like brothers. They're good friends. And if you're going to bully Bakugo, Deku's going to destroy you. He is going to literally blow you up. And that's what his quirk does. Now, we skip. And when the Sledgeland attacks Deku... Since Deku is stronger than in canon, and stronger than what Bakugo would have been in canon, and probably had a lot of time training with Bakugo when it comes to fighting, he wouldn't use his quirk a lot when fighting Bakugo, because he wants to get in good experience, but when Bakugo wants Deku to use his quirk against him, they're definitely, De Deku's definitely stronger than Bakugo with his quirk, but when it comes to, well, when it comes to without his quirk, they're even. So, well, Deku would have a lot of experience, and I think since Baku would pr probably be able to do a couple sneak attacks on Deku, when, like, there's smoke everywhere from Deku creating his explosions, Deku would have to have a good, well, reaction speed. And he'd have to be fast, which he would be. So, the Sledge Wheel basically goes and tries to attack Deku, Deku quickly, basically, runs, shooting himself forward with his quirk. When the Sludge Glen comes out, he says, You have quite a strong quirk. I'll take it. As he charges at Deku, Deku puts his hands up, and he starts charging up a small, like, explosion. Like, starts off with small explosions, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, until he releases, and he says, Volcanic Eruption. As, well... He releases an explosion that somewhat, like, spews out similar to what a volcano would look like. And when he does this, well, the, well, Sledgelin has a large chunk of him gone. The Sledgelin still charges at Deku, and Deku is mostly just evading, because his he knows his quirk isn't as strong as what he needs it to be. He's like, all he can really do is brute force, but right now he's moving around, just grabbing on different things. And since they were, well, well, under a bridge, I think Deku would shoot himself up to the ledge of the bridge and start shooting explosions down on the sludge villain. And this is when the sludge villain, after, well, half of his body already being gone, would start forming back together and would say, your quirk is more of that of a villain than a hero. So what were you going to be, kid? And when Deku hears that the villain basically just called him, well, the sludge villain basically calls him a villain. Deku quickly rushes at the sludge villain and does a massive explosion right in the sludge villain's face. But before anything else can happen, All Might appears and takes down the sludge villain. All Might compliments Deku on his 
powerful quirk. And Deku, being the way he is, would, well, ask for an autograph, because All Might is still his favorite hero. But he'd ask for two, because he wants one for his friend, as well. All Might would give Deku two autographs, and as he's about to jump off, Deku would grab on, and he would ask All Might, similar to what he asked in canon, but instead of saying, can I be a hero without a quirk? He says, can I be the number one hero with my quirk? All Might would say that Deku has a very good chance at being the number one hero if he trains his quirk more and learns to control it a bit more. Once Deku hears this, he basically thinks that, well, he, ha he has a chance. He was told that he has a very good chance at that by All Might. And... Deku's very happy, and he goes. He goes running home, so when he goes to train with Bakugo later today, then, well, he can tell him that he not only met All Might, but All Might said he had a good chance of becoming the number one hero. And he's running off, and before anything else can happen, the Slud All Might realizes the sludge villain is gone, and Deku goes off, and he won't hear explosions from... Well, he won't hear explosions from anywhere because Baka wouldn't have an explosion quirk. But he would be running home very fast. So he'd get there and there are the heroes trying to, you know, get, well, the sludge villain off of Bakugo. And Baku's just slowly trying to rip the sludge villain off. He can't really do anything. And the moment Deku sees this, he's terrified because his best friend is in trouble by a villain who just attacked him, Deku could barely do anything to it, and, well, couldn't do anything. And the reason the such villain is there is because it fell out of All Might's pocket, probably because Deku grabbed onto All Might's leg. And seeing this, he'd be very, well, angry at himself, and he starts thinking he has to help Bakugo. As he shoots forward with a bunch of explosions, he goes right next to Baku and does the biggest explosion he's ever done in his life, yelling, Volcanic Eruption. As he does an explosion that was two times bigger than earlier. Earlier, it took off like a quarter of the Sludge Villain. Now, it took off half the Sludge Villain's body. And... Deku basically starts trying to pull Bakugo out of the Sludge Villain, exploding bits of the, well, Sludge Villain off of Bakugo. He mostly aims for the parts that are protected by clothes and stuff like that, so he doesn't burn Bakugo. So he'd be mostly shooting at places like, well, Bakugo's pants, because the pants are naturally going to be stronger than his shirt. So he starts shooting and shooting and shooting until... There's barely any of such left, and Baku was able to get out. And All Might would see this and would quickly jump in, like he did in canon, and take care of the Sludge Villain. Now, as he takes care of the Sludge Villain, Baku says, uh, uh, All Might. And Deku thanks, or not Deku, but Baku thanks, well, Deku for helping him, unlike what he did in canon, and says that he doesn't feel like training today and that is because well he got attacked Bako got to the realization that he can't be a hero even though he wants to and Deku says then he'll see him tomorrow to check well at school to check up on him well he wouldn't say at school but he'll see him tomorrow then Baku says yeah and as Baku is leaving and already turned the corner All Might would appear in front of Deku and would say that, young man, I want to train you. And he would say that he has a quirk that can be passed on to other people. But the moment Deku hears this, he has a quirk that can be passed on to other people. And this is when ba this one Deku says he doesn't want it. All Might says, why don't you want my quirk? You can definitely become the number one hero if you have it. You already have a good chance. And that's when Deku says, you're right, I already have a good chance, so I don't want it. Because besides, there are people in the world who probably want to become heroes, but can't because they don't have quirks. All Might hearing this would basically immediately think back to when he was given one fall. He didn't have a quirk. And then, this is when, well, 
Well, All Might would ask, who should I give it then to? Deck would say the person who was attacked by the sludge villain. He would say that person is his friend called Bakugo. And Bakugo, even though he was, or should have in theory, had a very powerful quirk, well, he was born quirkless. And All Might basically takes this into suggestion and basically says, yes, he'll train Bakugo. But only, he'll also give Bakugo one fault, if only Deku also is there. Deku says yes. So the next day, Deku calls Bakugo to come to Welcome to Dagobah Beach. This is when Bakugo would say that's a weird place to go. What about a normal, well, training spot? This is when Deku says just come to Dagobah Beach. It's a nice area to train, besides I think we should use or get a different area, or a different scenery, there we go. And Baku is so sure, as he takes a train, he gets to Dagobah Beach, he sees Deku, and then All Might appears. All Might appears before Deku and Baku go, and Baku is fanboying out. This is when All Might basically tells him what's going on. He said yesterday he met young Midoriya. He wanted to train young Midoriya, but he also said that he wouldn't be trained if you weren't here. And this is when Baku says about that. I just got a realization that, well, I can't be a hero without a quirk. And this is when Deku would basically slap Baku, though, because he'd be like, you can be a hero, saying that you just gotta train more. Saying you got to do more, well, harsher training to strengthen your body even more. I mean, there are heroes who don't have, or don't, who have superhuman levels of strength and don't, and it doesn't have to do with their quirk. They have superhuman levels of strength, but it has nothing to do with their quirk enhancing their strength. This when Baku says, but I'll never be there. Those heroes had years to train. And that's when Deku says, so will you, you just got to train now start training now, and you'll be able to, well, do stuff. And that's when All Might, well, this is when All Might jumps in and says about that. His quirk, his quirk, one for all, he says, can be passed down to other people. That's why you're here, Baku, though. I want to pass my quirk down to you. And Baku says, you're, you're joking with me, right? I must be in some type of dream. And All Might says no. But, first we gotta make sure your body is strong enough to hold it. Saying that if your body isn't strong enough to withstand one fall, you're gonna explode. Hearing this makes, well, makes Baku think that, so I have to be as big as you, if not bigger? This is when All Might says, no. I'm just this way because, well, to give hope into people. Besides. The stronger my body is, the stronger one fall is. You don't have to be as big as me to, well, use one fall. As he looks at Bakugo already in his workout attire, he says, you already look pretty strong, but before I give you one fall, let's get a bit of training in. Quite a bit, he says. As he says to both Deku and Bakugo that both of you will be cleaning up Dagobah Beach. And since both of them are already about three times stronger than what Deku was after the 10 months of training, it takes both of them about a month to actually pick it up because they will be focusing on picking it up, not just building muscle like Deku was because, well, he didn't just try and clean Dagobah Beach the entire time. He was doing other things than just working out or just cleaning it. He was working out by running. He was uh, at school and he was also, well, lifting weights from like stuff and garbage that was there. It wasn't just cleaning. He was using that stuff to work out, and he kept doing reps with the same stuff repeatedly. So both Deku and Bakugo just trying to clean up the beach, they'd get it done within a month. Which All Might would think is pretty good, so he starts having them train more and more with calisthenics and stuff like that. But at the beginning of the second month is when, well, it's when they, well, when Bakugo gets... One for all. He gets one for all, and it changes his life. He uses it once, his arm breaks. This is when, well, All Might says to let the energy flow, 
he doesn't get it at first, but after training for a while, and actually being able to see how All Might uses it, and, well, how, and having Deku there to help him, Deku would say, I can only use my explosions in my hands. You're only trying to use, well, one fall in your arm. Try to have the energy go throughout your entire body, something like that. Because you worked out your entire body, not just your arms, right? So, let it go out th throughout your entire body. And similar to how Deku was during, well, the entire Gran Torino thing and Hero Killer arc. It would be hard for Baku at first, but after a couple of weeks of training, he'd be able to use Volcaling quite easily. And this is when they start training. Deku realizes that Baku might actually be stronger than him. This is when Deku starts putting in some harsh training. He starts, well, he starts using his quirk to the point where his arms are basically broken, to where he can't feel them. And he does this so his arms will get used to them, but he knows the weakness of his quirk is how strong his bones are. So, in this, Deku will actually get surgery for his bones. This surgery is going to be a lot easier to do because of the quirks. There is a chance he could die, but it's very low because of the doctors there and the nurses there. It costs a lot of money, though, and I think Deku would have just barely enough to get this surgery after saving up for years. This surgery would take a full week to do, so Deku won't be able to leave the hospital for a week, and he'll only be on liquids. He won't be able to eat any solid food for a couple days before it, and he won't be able to eat at all throughout the surgery or after it for a while. This surgery doesn't just focus on Deku's arms. If he wanted it to focus only on his arms, then, well, he'd have a lot more money, and he'd probably get it done sooner, but... What the surgery does is it coats his bones in a very strong metal alloy that was put together by, well, a person with their quirk. Because their quirk was metal fusion. They could fuse different types of metals together to make different metal al alloys and mold it as it's being fused. But what they did was melt down this metal alloy... And so, they inject it onto Deku's body. They give him a lot of painkillers. They give him... And they have nurses who have healing quirks constantly healing Deku as it's happening. So, after the couple of weeks that he's in the hospital from healing, and, you know, realizing how heavy he is, even though, you know, it's still just only around half his body, one thing Deku's wondering, can he swim? And, after a while, Deku would realize he can, it's just, if he doesn't keep moving, he's going to sink. So, yeah. Now, because it's, well, it's not just metal bones, he has metal covering his bones. So, it's not as heavy as you might think, but it's not as light as you might think, because there's a lot of bones. So, Deku, because of this, will... Be able to do bigger and stronger explosions than Bakugo. But Bakugo's body is still weak, and the stronger Bakugo's body gets, the stronger he will get. So Deku's just thinking, I have to make my explosion stronger. <clears throat> and that's what he'll do. He'll constantly build his explosions and make them stronger and stronger every day. And he realized how strong Bakugo got, uh, Bakugo got after only being trained by All Might for that couple of weeks he was in the hospital. They don't even know why he was in the hospital. They, he just said he was going to be in the hospital for a while. So they don't even know he has this well, surgery done on his body. And when they ask why he was in the hospital, he says it's a secret. So yeah, we skip to after the 10 months of training. Bakugo can use around 20% of one for all. So he can use around 20% of one for all, which is actually a lot. But... He can either only do, he can only really handle 10% full cowling 
without losing control of where he's going. Yes, you can boost it up to 20%, but 20% is his max. But after 10% of full cowling, it's harder and harder for him to control. Deku would already have a lot of moves created. One would be AP shot, armor piercing shot. Another move he would have would be Howlancer Impact. Volcanic Eruption is when he puts his hands together and, well, do, does a massive explosion. Deku's very strong in this, but Bakugo is also strong. So when we get to the court, or when we get to the, well, uh, what's it called? Entrance exam. The theory exam is a breeze for Bakugo and Deku. They may have been training a lot, but there is no reason to only focus on training. They studied as well, to an extent. Bakugo would have gotten close to what he did in canon, while Deku would have gotten way higher than what he got in canon. Now, we skip to the, well, robot portion of the test, and this is when both Deku and Bakugo challenge each other to, well, <clears throat> see who's going to be stronger. Baku is saying he's going to be, and Deku is saying he's going to be. As they both say, right before they have to leave, may the met the best man win. Baku would have, well, some experience with his quirk, but not a whole lot compared to Deku, who has way less experience than Deku. And Bakugo is mostly ranged. To an extent, he can shoot well, smashes, but they're not very strong. So he focuses more on melee. So he goes up to robots and punches them, kicks them, stuff like that. While Deku is mostly ranged, he does do close range attacks by shooting himself forward at robots and destroying them. He's focusing since his quirk is going to be brute force and he has to use a lot of brute force to destroy robots. He's focusing on destroying them with a lot of brute force. But he also notices that he shouldn't just go for the strongest part of the body because he sees Ida going for, well, the legs of the robot. Areas that are weaker, and Deku would be shooting past robot after robot, zigzagging, and taking down one leg of robot, and it falls over, which would count as the robot being taken down. By the time the Zero Pointer shows up, Bakugo already has 120, while Deku has 120 as well. They've been keeping up because they're just as strong as each other. Deku just a tad bit more. When the Zero Pointer comes, Deku basically is there and, well, he punches, not punches, but he goes and he shoots himself forward in the air with his explosions repeatedly. And... This is just called, well, Rocket, as he basically has smaller explosions in his hands, and he slowly builds explosions up higher and higher until he jumps in the air, getting a couple feet off the ground, and then rockets himself forward with his explosions, which it's harder than what Deku thought because, well, he has the bones, the metal well, alloy covering his bones now, which is going to be harder for him to use his quirk more, especially when it comes to moving around. The only reason he's able to move around as much as he is is because how powerful his explosions are. As he shoots massive explosions shooting them forward more and more, this is when people are realizing that guy's strong. And then Deku goes up to the zero pointer and lands on its body. And he's basically just destroying rope. He's using a lot of brute force to destroy the weak points on its head until it releases a massive explosion which throws Deku off and the zero pointer would be falling. As Deku is falling, he starts shooting himself forward, creating even more speed that he's falling at because he's well shooting himself away from where the robot is. He starts really well, he starts doing massive explosions trying to sh well slow his descent, which he is able to do a lot, quite a bit actually, but since he's still falling, he's not able to do much until or Raka shows up. Or Raka would slap Deku in the face, similar to how she did in canon. And instead of hitting the ground like, well, he did in canon, he'd do a massive explosion again and would just, well, shoot back. So yeah, 
Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it off here. I'll see you in the next video. If you want more of this thing about subscribing, you don't have to, but I greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, and have a wonderful time. Bye.